South America is one of those continents that has a lot of really interesting folklore that I feel like people don't hear about all too much. So I've decided to look into it a little bit, and starting with perhaps the most well-known creature on this list, we have the Chon Chon. And yeah, if this is the most well-known, then you can already tell we're in for a good time. The Chon Chon is an owl-like head monster with two massive ears in place of wings. It flies silently over the Argentina countryside where it announces mischief, death, and other broadly bad stuff. I'm not really sure how it announces such things, considering it remains silent the whole time, but I assume it just uses email. Many believe the Chonchons are actually Kalku in disguise, Kalku being these evil sorcerer types that can detach their heads and make them fly around. So yeah, I'd say they're a pretty strong contender then. Anyway, alongside being omens of bad news and mischief, the Chonchons are also vampiric. But if you're not into that kind of thing, then don't worry, there's a few ways to repel them. One of the most tried and true methods being the Seal of Solomon, which, when drawn on the ground, will prevent Chonchons from entering the area. A much more fun way to dispose of the Chonchons is to yell come back tomorrow for some salt when you see them flying around in the night sky. Then the next day, they will return in their sorcerer form, asking for the salt you had previously promised. Apparently they're real big sodium fans. At this point I'm not really sure what your next step should be, considering you've essentially just invited an evil sorcerer to your house, but that's beside the point. Moving on to something a bit more aquatic, we have the Anyapana, a monstrous man-eating manfish that butchers the Yananami people of Brazil almost as terribly as I butcher the pronunciation of these South American names. In all seriousness though, they are described as massive car-sized piranhas with a coat of fur, two comically large arms, and a mouthful of not-so-comically large teeth. One story tells of a group of Anyapanas that released their inner termite by gnawing their way through a wooden bridge, causing it to collapse. The Anunnami folk who were crossing at the time used the rubble as a raft to safely float through the deep water. It was all for naught, however, when they mysteriously and spontaneously turned into a bunch of monkeys and pigs. Yeah, folklore's weird. An interesting trope among many of these South American monsters is being completely impervious with the exception of a single, vulnerable part of their body. For some creatures, this weak spot is fairly straightforward. Such is the case for the Munanani, a humanoid turtle fish monster with eyes for knees, which double as his aforementioned weakness. On the other hand, you have the Kairi, who despite resembling the unsafe blend of a gopher and mushroom, is completely resilient to all damage, save for, randomly enough, his kidneys, which are particularly vulnerable to bone-tipped arrows. Not all of these beasts are as terrifying and grisly as the ones we've discussed so far, however, and many are actually quite beautiful. For example, take the case of Hanaga, a rainbow-clad anteater spirit given the moniker Owner of the Storms by the Toba people of Argentina. As this title implies, the case of Hanaga serves as something of a storm spirit, possessing the power to spit lightning and roar so loudly that it results in thunder. I was not aware that anteaters roared in the first place, but hey, maybe the rainbows and the roaring come as a package deal. Something else that's kind of funny to me is that even though it's this great, all-powerful storm deity, it's still just the size of a regular anteater. And while it can technically take human form as well, it doesn't seem to be very good at it because whenever it does, its human head will be disproportionately small. However, the vast majority of South American monsters that I could find are both terrifying and grisly. The Abuhuku, for example, is a humanoid mosquito man from the Amazon believed to represent disease, death, and other bad stuff. So presumably he was one of the first to receive the Chon Chon's invitation email. Anyway, their main plot in life is kidnapping and devouring humans, which is very easy for them since their sticky skin makes it nigh impossible to escape their grasp, and their needle-like proboscis is great for burrowing through skulls and sucking up brain juice and the like. However, the Abuhuku are also laughably stupid, and can easily be fooled even by small children. Although luckily for them, despite their immense idiocy, they are also incredibly popular and have a lot of friends, ranging from poisoners to murderers and even a group of evil jaguars. Because of this, they were able to earn their spot as a force to be reckoned with. Until they were reckoned with by a series of fires and floods resulting in a sharp decline of their population along with the aforementioned evil jaguars, which is why the modern Amazon rainforest is full of nothing but morally ambiguous jaguars. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today, but while researching this topic, I did accidentally stumble upon a holy trinity of mother snake goddesses, which I think can make an interesting video later on. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then consider subscribing and keeping a lookout for that. And until next time, don't die. See you later.